We are tying up the week with a bow. We are doing some cozy minimalist planning today. As usual, I am answering your questions. We've got book talk, housekeeping talk, and as usual, your choice of four self-care missions. So let's dive in. Diane and Denmark here. Ra, ra, ra. Welcome back to another session of Cozy Minimalist Weekly Planning. I'm a routines coach and this year I'm helping you to simplify and to thrive. We are creating a life that we love, uh, a home that we, we don't want to run away from. And as I said, answering your questions today, we've got book talk, housekeeping stuff and, and self-care. Anyway, Let's just dive in with the questions. It's a cozy chat today. We're not working against the clock, but you may want to fold laundry, wash the dishes, tidy up your office while we chat. And I'll just get my uh, reading glasses on. And as always, you can leave a question on any of my YouTube videos. I answer the ones that come up again and again or the, or the fun uh, and, and personal ones. So anyway, let's dive in. May Francis Xavier, okay. Hi Diane, I've been wondering for a while if it is typical for young adult children to move out of home when they finish school like yours have. Also, if they don't, how do we incorporate adult children into the household chores when they're busy going in and out or should we forget about that? I have two university age children living at home still. Okay, so first question from Mary Frances. Yeah, it is actually quite typical for kids at an early age to move out of the family home here in Denmark. They, they get, when, when they start studying, they get a kind of student grant, uh, which last time I checked was about 6,000 Danish crowns per month. You can check that. It is quite a good chunk of money for them. And that will cover their um, kind of housing, living, living expenses, or go a, a, a bit of the way towards that. So, so it's very common for kids to move out at a quite early age, 17, 18 years old. And the other question about the chores for the kids, and for, for us, the, the kids have always cleaned their own rooms when they were living at home, taking part in the chores of the house, um, helping out with gardening. And the only time I kind of went a bit easier on them, if they were studying for like a really big exam, then I wouldn't ask them to do so much. But definitely, I mean, when they move out of home, they're going to have to do their own chores anyway. So definitely get them into the habit of that. And you can get your kids helping from as soon as they're like two years old. They can be helping to put things in the washing machine or gathering up the toys at the end of the day and putting them back in baskets. So definitely chores for kids at all ages, definitely. Next one is from uh, Snav575. I'm trying to do something in my backyard for a few minutes every day. It makes me feel good to be outside, but I have trouble being consistent. Aha. Why is that? You know, I, I answer these kind of questions every week. If you're, if you're looking for answers to these kind of uh, fly lady questions, questions about routines, these come up again and again in the Friday chat. So that, that's where you can go back through the playlist, listen to those. Many of the things come up again and again. First up, do you have a time, a date and place for whatever the, the, the task that you want to do is? For example, yard work, gardening. Because once you've got a time, a date and a place in it, it becomes very automatic and it takes the guesswork out. It's not, oh, when am I going to be, for example, with laundry. For me, laundry is just, I do laundry every day. I'm not doing a whole load of laundry every day, but I'm doing something to do with laundry every day. So part of my morning routine is just, I'm, I'm, I don't even have to think about it. I'm just on automatic pilot. And the other side of that, well, once you've got a time, date and a place, that's really, really important because then it's just in, in your routine, it becomes automatic. But are you also using a timer? Because I know, for example, for me, the weather is now improving here in Denmark. It's kind of dull here today. But anyway, we've got the candles going. It's all good. And I'm going to be, I know that I need to keep up with work in the garden. And I can do that thing where I will maybe go out the weekend and I'll do a couple of hours and then. And then I should really just be doing the 15 minutes a day or five or 10 minutes 
And I've realized that in the past, I've thought, oh, I need to be out doing big chunks of time. No, 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 no. This is where the timer comes in. Remember, we're, we're not working against the timer today, or not against the timer, with the timer. And I think if you be honest with yourself and say, okay, you break down the task. If I can just do 10 minutes a day in the summer when, when, when my garden really needs a lot of work, and I do 10 minutes after dinner or 10 minutes in the morning, but knowing that I'm on the clock, it gives me that permission to stop. And it also gives me that, that thing in my head that says, I'm not going to be out there for hours because often we say, oh, but I don't have time to do it because you think oh, I need to be out there for hours. No, try setting the timer, do 10 or 15 minutes and then that's it. Then, then you know, put, put down your gardening tools and come back in because we, we tend to, with, with these uh, seasonal changes, we, we, we go way overboard with our time and what we think we need to do. So try, try the timer trick. Right, next question is, oh, this is actually uh, three questions all about languages. Okay, so first one, Park 2756. Now that it's just you and hubby, what language do you find yourselves using when you talk to each other? Okay, uh, hubby and I, we have always spoken English together. We met working at the Supreme Court, uh, the EU European Supreme Court in Luxembourg, and we fell in love speaking English. So we, we've always spoken English together. If we are um, with friends or if we are out and about and there's a, a third person in the mix, uh, you know, we are here in Denmark, then we will uh, speak in Danish. But if it's just the two of us, it's English. Okay, another question about language from Beck Park 2289. Thank you for keeping me motivated and making things easy to follow. Rah, rah, rah. Thank you. Thank you, Beck. I have a question about your friends. A lot of you seem to be from different corners of the world. What language do you speak when you're together? So, yes, when I'm with my besties, my Danish besties, Vipika and Helena, the ones that you see me uh, dipping with in the sea in the mornings, we've always spoken Danish together. We met through, uh, I met Helena at a uh, mother's group when our daughters were like three, four months old. And now our daughters are 22 years old. So I've known, I've known Helena for a long time. And I know Vibika because our daughters, uh, well, also partly through Helena, but our daughters were in the same class at school. So we, we've, always, uh, we've always spoken English, to, uh, nonsense. We've always spoken Danish together. We, we never speak in English together. But the ladies that I'm with, you know, in the Blue Tits Chill Swimmers group, we're from all different nationalities, the same with my uh, ladies group, Link International Network, Kubenhaun, the Link group that I'm a member of. That, that will depend. Uh, we usually speak English together because we have, uh, the ladies are from India, France, Germany, Sweden, Chile, Brazil, America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, but when I'm kind of one-on-one -on -one with ladies where I speak their language, like uh, Celine, my French friend, when we're at Blue Tits, we'll, we'll speak in French together. But then when we're speaking with the rest of the group, then we'll revert to English. If there's some Swedish ladies there, I'll speak Swedish. And then again, revert when there's a larger group, revert to English. Uh, and then the last one about languages here in Denmark. This is from Helen Fabry, 2011. Do they dub subtitle English language movies into Danish? A colleague, a colleague is moving to Copenhagen with his family for work and doesn't speak Danish. All uh, movies that you will see at the cinema, they are in their orin in original language with Danish subtitles. So if it's uh, an American film, it's in English, American, American English with Danish subtitles. And uh, last week I went to see Dune 2 with my son. Have you seen it? Fabulous. I loved Dune 1, Dune 2. I haven't re read the books. My, my son has read all the books and loved them all. Uh, but the movie was in English with Danish subtitles. But there are actually a few um, showings of English films with English uh, subtitles. So there you go. 
But usually on TV here, everything is shown in the original language. Like we have a lot of uh, German TV, and that is in German with um, Danish subtitles. So there you go. Fun questions today. And this one is from Gaberna, uh, which is uh, Gabrielle. Okay, so hi, Diane. Question for you. When you continue to move through and declutter the zones on a weekly basis, what do you do when the zone you're in is really as decluttered as can be and you consistently feel that you use, need everything? Do you still do a general overview of the space and tidy up or just skip it? Much love from Gabrielle. Okay, so great question. And you know, my house is fairly well decluttered. I can, I can always find something to declutter. And that, that will be very individual for you. I find it really helpful just at the start of the week. Say, for example, next week, zone, zone three, the bathroom. I'm really well decluttered in the bathroom. I mean, you've seen our, our bathroom and it, it, it's small and I've decluttered a lot of the years. So I take a quick scan there and then I move into another area like the basement where I'm still going through things. So, I mean, you could skip that week entirely and take a break, but I would really recommend that you continue looking maybe another area that needs a bit more work. Maybe that's an attic, garden, shed, think out of the box, but you know, do, do, do you, you do you. From Laura Roseanne, great video, Diane. I love the idea of outfit prepping, kind of like meal prepping. Roseanne, uh, Laura, Laura, Roseanne, she's referring to the video, the Dressing Your Truth video that I did, the hour long with Carol Tuttle of Dressing Your Truth, where you can see inside my wardrobe, how we organize things, jewelry, putting together outfits. I hope you, I hope you saw that. It was a great, uh, great video. Uh, Laura Roseanne says, I love the idea of outfit prepping, kind of like meal prepping, but somehow it does not work for me. I need to be in a mood in the morning to choose a certain outfit. Any tips? Okay, and any, anybody who's in the same case, I want you to think about this in a couple of ways. Are you feeling that you can't put an outfit together because you know you have to feel right or feel comfy? Is that because you're not getting out of your comfort zone? You're always defaulting to that thing that you know and feels comfy on you. That, that could be one of the, the reasons that you're, you, you don't plan your outfits in advance. You just, oh, you keep on coming back to the same old, same old. Okay, so that could be one thing. Another thing is, uh, if it's something to do with, oh, this is something I've heard a lot when we're talking about fly lady, getting ready for the day. Oh, I don't know what the weather's gonna be like. Well, you can set up several outfits. And that's what I do. I have, I have things that I'm, I'm intending to wear the next few days. I have them at one end of my wardrobe. And if one isn't appropriate for the day, I can take out a different one. <laughs> and you know, we do have very changeable weather here in Denmark. So, so don't be using that as an excuse. Oh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel. Put together some outfits. At least you've got something to work, to, to work with. And it could be a sign that you are just being indecisive about things. Sometimes we've just got to make a decision. It might not be the perfect decision, but we've just got to make a decision, okay? And you, you, may, you may not even, you know, if it doesn't affect you putting together outfits, if it doesn't change the way you feel, but I think for most of us, it cuts down that stress in the morning. We want to look our best. We want to feel our best. And as I uh, spoke about with, with Carol in the video, it just gives us that kind of self-confidence. We, we've done something, we've put ourselves out there. So, so just, just try that, try, try putting together a few outfits and see, get out of your comfort zone. I've added a little bit of ribbon today. I'm, I'm doing something a little bit ribbon. And this, this was just, I, I've got some odds and ends in my ribbon box. And I, I thought, oh, this necklace, it looks a bit kind of old ladyish. I've tied a little ribbon on it today. Do something different. Dina B6476, question for Friday. Do you make your own cleaning product, products? I've been overwhelmed by the amount I had. I've been gradually using them up. I won't be repurchasing. We'll give the homemade stuff a chance. Okay, so Dina B and everybody else. I personally don't make my own cleaning products. I, I have gone through that a, a few years ago. And in the end, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna stick 
and I, I don't buy toxic products any longer because I'm being consistent with my cleaning. I don't need the toxic stuff. And as you've seen, I, I use, a, it's a Danish brand and it doesn't, you don't need to buy the same as me, but I get my, you can get them from like a health food shop anywhere where it's kind of uh, environmentally friendly. My ones are not tested on animals. They're not bad for you. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get them on your clothes that they're not going to stain them. And I would say if, if you want to go down that road of making your own products, be careful because actually using things like essential oils, they can be harmful to pets uh, or if you've got people with allergies or asthma in your home. So be careful. Sometimes the homemade products can be dangerous uh, in, in other ways. So just be, be careful with that. And the main thing I would say is just use up what you've got and moving forward, just get something that works for you, something easy, whatever is easy. And because you're going to be doing your cleaning consistently, hopefully you've been following along since the start of the year, you don't need the toxic products anymore. It never gets that bad. Oh, actually, I'll take this one. Uh, I'll take this one first because the next one's about books and that will segue nicely into uh, the book talk. And also I want to get into the self-care. I've got some really great ones for you this week, even though I say it myself. OK, and this is a, um, actually comments on Monday's video when we were decluttering in the kitchen. And you, you saw me, I was decluttering jam jars and I kept the Bon Maman jars. Now, Lots of people commented that what they use their, their jars for. So first one is from Wendy Gaunach, I think you pronounce it, 3908. Hi Diane, I love Bon Maman jars and keep them on hand. They were life-saving when our power went out in November for 13 days. We popped a fat candle into three jars and used them to light our living room and kitchen. They were just the right, right size and lasted a long time. We would put the lids on at night to keep the cats away from them. Since then, I've replaced the ones we used and we have stored the candle jars for next time. We don't have power. And then she says, your vintage Tupperware brought back memories. Great, great idea, uh, Wendy, because these Bon Maman jars, they come in different sizes. I, I, I've, had the, I've got the little tiny pots. OK, another one is from Roberta Gelliner, 9573. I also saved the Bon Maman jam jars for homemade jams and sauces. So good. Yeah, that great idea also for the sauces. And then we also have um, Alida van den Veldhoven, 5167. She says, hello, Diane. She's in uh, the Netherlands. Hi there in the Netherlands. I use the Bon Maman jars to prep easy breakfasts in busy weeks. Few spoons of granola, soya yogurt, and some frozen fruit, always ready to go. And I love that idea. Um, also, Mia Cat Adventures, hello, hello to you again. The Bon Maman jars are great for doing overnight oats in. And also, Ms. Sarah Jam. Is that a made up name? Sarah Jam. It's quite funny because the jam jars. Get it? Yeah. And she said, yes, chia pudding in, in, the, uh, in, in the little jars. And I took that idea and because, you know, I'm doing the fasting thing and in uh, intermittent fasting and in the afternoon, uh, I like to get a lot of protein by having uh, Greek yogurt and I mix in um, a spoonful of um, vanilla flavored protein powder, sprinkle chia seeds and some uh, blueberries. So I, I prepped my afternoon snacks and I've been enjoying that this week. So there you go. So thank you for the ideas. Oh, always great ideas in the comments section of my videos. And one last one, which will segue nicely into book talk. And then we'll get into uh, just a wee tiny bit of housekeeping and self-care. Elena Collins, 1956. Is there a place where you've kept track of the books you've read and enjoyed? I love your recommendations and I try to go back through old videos to see which books you recommend that I haven't tried yet, but it's difficult to find. Uh, Lena, I, I do have them on my blog, dianedenmark.com. Uh, I was at one point doing uh, book reviews, but it took so long to put it together. And that's why I've moved it to here in the videos and the book talk. You can always go through my, my Friday uh, Cozy Minimalist Planning weekly videos 
and I have timestamps on all of the videos so you can zoom straight forward to, uh, to books. But you'll, you'll still find them on my blog and I think you can probably search by, I, I think I've got them categorised by books. There's a section of books. The other question about books is from Elizabeth Goldgaber. She says, have you read Atomic Habits? Yes, I have. I, it's on many of my, my videos that I've talked about. It aligns to what you're saying about doing a little bit each day. I appreciate you, Diane. I've been watching, working alongside you. When I fall down, I always come back to your videos. Yay! Thanks for that, Elizabeth. Yeah, uh, Atomic Habits is a fabulous book. It's one, it's one of the um, only ones I haven't decluttered yet. You know, I, I declutter my books. Once I've read them, I pass them on. I've actually still kept that one. Ooh, should that be decluttered soon? And if you haven't read it, if you've been doing the Fly Lady system along with me, and I know the Fly Lady system works, but it really gives you this system, the system, the, the science of why, lady, why the Fly Lady system works so well. Great questions. Let's get straight on to some books. On audiobooks, I have just finished S.J. Bennett, The Three Dog, the three dog Problem. Really enjoyed that. I will be listening to more in the series. And the one that I'm listening to right now and really enjoying is Death at the Auction by E.C. Bateman. And as I said, I get all my books from, for, for free through our local Danish libraries and I listen to them on uh, Overdrive, uh, the, the Libby app. And the other one that I am reading, uh, the ebook, is the, uh, a book by Joe Silva, which is called The Cornish Curse. And there, there's a lot there, there's a lot of rude language in it, uh, but it's a it's a fun book and it, it's kind of like it's modern day pirates and it's set in Cornwall. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you look it up yourself and see if it might be something for you. But so so far, I'm I'm really enjoying it. Very very different. And our housekeeping for next week. You saw on Monday, hopefully you were decluttering along with me in the kitchen. I got uh, rid of quite a, a few things. And it's just that even if we're really decluttered, it's just a, a good way to assess what you've got because it stops you buying new stuff. It stops you bringing stuff in. So this week was the kitchen. Remember, just 10 minutes at a time. Don't go overboard with these things. Use my videos to keep you on track. I've got playlists for each of the zones. Zone three, the bathroom next week. I shall be working on things in the basement because when the kids were here for Easter, we, we kind of went down memory lane and I was showing them some old um, music posters, some stuff from my punk days, and I think I'm ready to let go of some of those. So stay tuned for that next week. And then onto the self-care and oh, look at that, sun's come out. Right, so one, two, three or four. Remember, if you enjoy my videos, please uh, like, subscribe, share with other people. That's a big pat on the back for me. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. As I've said, I don't do sponsored content. I don't put annoying pop-up uh, adverts. So you can help me in that way. So self-care. Four great ones for you this week. Try, try and do all four or let me know in a comment down below which one you will go for. One, two, three, four. First one, scents, where we're going to enjoy all the scents this week. Maybe you can um, swap over your perfumes. Maybe use a perfume that you haven't used for a long time. A smelly candle. Personally, I, I don't use the, the smelly candles. Hubby, hubby doesn't like them. So what I usually do is... Uh, uh, if you've got a diffuser, try a new mix of scents. I've got my little one from uh, Muji. This one, you don't need any water in it. It's a portable one. And I can just kind of carry it around <laughs> where I'm working. Mm, ooh, I can use it at my desk and it's um, one that you can recharge. You could take it on vacation with you. And when I was in Muji yesterday, they've always got a kind of, you know, scent of the day. And it was called Refresh and I thought, it smelled really nice and then when I looked at it it was um, a mix of scents that I already have lemon eucalyptus peppermint and they had used um, grapefruit I don't like grapefruit uh, but I've got um, sweet orange so I, I put that in my little diffuser this morning and just a nice to have a, a, a different scent going on pick some blooms from the garden We've got hyacinths, 
which are blooming right now. Also the daffodils, some of them have a really sweet scent. So think about that, something to do with scents that will just give you a little boost. Mission number two is to think about meal prep or planning. Now, you just heard me talking about the uh, Bon Maman jars. Prep some nice uh, breakfasts or uh, lunches for yourself this week. Maybe you can go out on a little picnic with your grandson or granddaughter or use your best china. Put some flowers on the table, candles. I mean, I, I love to do that every day. And yesterday it was Hubby and I's uh, 26th wedding anniversary. We're doing where we're going out the rest of the weekend. So we, we chose not to go out for dinner yesterday. But I set a really nice table. We used our wedding china, our wedding crystal glasses. And we, we just had a really nice uh, dinner together. It doesn't need to cost a fortune. Just use what you've got. Mission number three is to listen to your head and body and take time for what you need this week. Because I think sometimes we might be feeling a bit, oh, not in the mood to do things or a bit off. Just, you know, actually, um, as we say in Danish, merke efter, just, just kind of zone in on yourself and say, what, what, what is it that I need right now? Is it to talk to a friend? Is it just to sit? with a blanket and watch some, some favorite cozy crimes on the TV. I gave you a whole list of the ones that I enjoy. Just feel what, what is it that, that your body or what is it that your mind needs, okay? Because sometimes we get so caught up in doing things that we forget to do that. So just take five or 10 minutes and say, okay, what is it that, that I would really benefit from today or, or here and now? And we've talked about that before. Maybe it's actually saying no to something, saying no to something today, not, not, not going out and doing something that you, that you had planned yourself, but just to decide what is right for you, okay? And mission number four is to make your health a priority. Actually make time for looking after your health. Now I was at my mammogram on Wednesday and it's not the most pleasant of tasks, but it was, nice to have it done and it's one of those things that sometimes we kind of put off getting these things done going to the dentist going to the opticians but in the long run that that is a really important form of self-care so you've got to carve out some time for yourself okay so one one two three or four let me down know down below which one it's going to be maybe maybe all four of them I hope you've got some nice plans for the weekend. Hubby and I, we are going to see Bill Bailey, the British uh, multi-talented, multi-talented, multi-talented artist. He, he's a musician, he's a comedian. He's just blinking fantastic. We've seen him before and I love Bill Bailey. So really looking forward to that. Also going to a party for one of my friends, a younger friend. I've got lots of younger friends who are all turning uh, 50 this year and I've got other friends who are all turning 60 this year. So anyway, hope you have a wonderful weekend. I shall see you next week working in Fly Lady Zone 3, the bathroom plus one or the room. And now I shall let you get on your merry way. I've been very chatty today, but great questions. All I've got left to say is live long and prosper. May the cozy minimalist weekly planning be with you. And I'll see you very soon with a wrap, wrap, wrap. Okay, bye for now.